please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas. To those guests who've just joined us, welcome. Our next stop is the Magic Kingdom. Ladies and gentlemen, we are approaching our station at the entrance to Main Street, USA, gateway to the seven theme lands of the Magic Kingdom. Welcome aboard the Monday Morning Monorail Podcast. This is Justin Monorail, and I don't have the whole Monorail family with me today. I just have my partner in crime, my better half. Chicken nugget? No, you are not a chicken nugget. <laughs> you are a chicken supreme. I don't know. I'm, I'm mom You're chicken. the deluxe char-grilled chicken sandwich. <laughs> yeah. I come at a premium price. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Samantha Monorail joining me. Hey. Yeah, and uh, we have a very special episode of the Monday Morning Monorail podcast today. Because um, you and I, we're not alone. No. We, we decided to call in one of the Monorail cousins, a... Honored guest, first one of our cousin. yeah first cousin, one of our favorite extended monorail family members, because there was an announcement hot off the presses. We're, just so you know, a little behind the scenes action. We're recording this on a very odd night. We never record on a Tuesday. Is it Tuesday? Is it Wednesday? What day is it? It's a Wednesday. See, I don't even know what day it is. We're recording on a Wednesday. I was thinking, oh crap, I still have a lot of work left. <laughs> We're recording on a Wednesday. Uh, because just yesterday, Disney announced that free dining is now available for packages booked in the fall and winter. And we know nothing about dining. We know nothing about booking Disney vacation packages. No, no. But but we know that this person we've previously teased that has joined us on the podcast has a lot of expertise about these things. And we were like, we've got to call in somebody who knows the facts, Wait, somebody who can educate us. So this came out. On a Tuesday. It did. Yeah. Oh, on a that's Tuesday. That's a song. Yeah. It kind of out of nowhere. I, I, it surprised a lot of people, I think. But but you know who was ready for it? I, I know. I know who was ready for it. I know. It was Nick Salcedo of Capture the Magic Vacations, and he's joining us on the Magical Monday Morning Monorail Hotline. Nick, welcome back to the podcast. Hey, hey, Monorail family. Good to be back. I've seen the pictures recently of uh, the new remakes the you know the coverings and everything's of the monorails i'm yeah. really impressed with what you guys <laughs> did with the place got the usb chargers and it doesn't it's not right. like a foot in here i'm sure landon is going to be just <laughs> static about what you guys have done with it. yeah i mean we make things happen yeah and uh and we haven't had any power outages that have like left us out in the middle of the rail you know requiring evacuation or anything like that these monorails are efficient and we can you can count on them no, no emergencies. No need to pop open those emergency windows. I, I don't. I don't discourage exciting stories, though. Yeah. Like the door was open the whole ride. <laughs> That's just adding to your experience, really. I, I think so. Right. It's a thrill ride. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> just imagine the gondola is dangling over the uh, water while you're, you know, zooming down there at what was it like seven miles an hour? Oh man, intense. Uh, Oh man, talking about announcements, they got that this week too. That's something we should. <laughs> that that's something else we should talk about. But, uh, but yeah, Nick, it's it's so good to have you back. Um, it's been way too long, and really, it was more our fault than it was yours. You were always available and willing to come on the show, but we had this little crazy. Uh, it's a sad excuse, but moving from Knoxville to. Yeah. To Orlando kind of got like in the way. Life got life in the way. Life got in the way a yeah. bit, so it kind of ruined yeah. our plans. All little life changes, yeah. yeah. No, that was kind of a big deal, but glad you guys are settled and new place looks good. New monorail smell. It's, <laughs> I'm excited to be back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we had originally planned to have you on after your spring trip down with the, the family, and, and we were going to do a little trip report, and we missed out on that. But uh, I know it's been a while, but... Uh, how did that trip go for you guys? Was it was it everything you imagined it would be? Oh, man, I, I could not have said enough about the trip that we had in the spring. That was our, our planned trip. Now that uh, my oldest daughter is getting a little bit older, we are a little bit less hesitant or a little more hesitant to pull her out of school. So we did it over our spring break. And, you know, I was heard about how wild and crazy it was in spring. And 
you know, sometimes the weather can be a little um, more rainy during March, mm -hmm. but I, I think we lucked out big time when we were down there. Weather was perfect. The resort was all awesome. Uh, there was a lot of different, you know, little magical things that we were able to experience down there. Good encounters with the cast members. It was just a, a phenomenal thing. And then, you know, cherry on top, icing on the cake. We got to meet one of the monorails. That's that right. was just a phenomenal time. <laughs> yeah, it was so much fun. And it really was a good week that they were here because like right now you feel how hot and like humid it is. Yeah, um, surface of the sun. During that time, <laughs> it was hot, but it was comfortable hot, which doesn't make any sense. But it does make sense. <laughs> if you live in Florida, it makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, That's right. Yeah, it, it was definitely really nice. I mean, it was at the peak of the day. If the sun was directly above you, we didn't really have that many clouds. I mean, it was nice swimming weather, mm. uh, mm. jacket weather, especially you know for my wife and the kids at night with that cool little breeze. But it was amazing to sit there, you know, sit out, watch the fireworks, eat a little snack while you're in the rose garden. I mean, it it was just a phenomenal time. That's yeah. awesome. Where it did you all stay? Uh, this time we tried out uh, Bay Lake Towers at that's, the Contemporary Resort. Yeah, yeah and that's what I thought. Man, if you guys ever get a chance to do that, it's within walking distance of the park. It was just phenomenal. The views that we had there. I know I shared some pictures on my uh, Twitter and Facebook pages, but I mean, it was it was just amazing. Mm. Uh, and we got to check out the Top of the World Lounge on that time, and it. it yeah, we're, we'll definitely be back there. <laughs> Making me so jealous. <laughs> and by the way, his little girls are so cute. Yeah. They're so sweet. And I had a lot of fun talking to them. I I had to, I think they were like, who is this weird lady who keeps trying to connect with me? But I got connected <laughs> yeah. and they opened up and they're adorable. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Appreciate well, it. Well, the yeah, I, I was thinking that you had stayed at the Bay Lake Tower. I remember seeing some of those pictures you posted, and that is one of those places I would love to to put on the list. Um, looking at you, Samantha Monorail, we got to stay at the the Bay Lake Tower at okay. some point. And that top of the world lounge is obviously on the list. I mean, yes. <laughs> and by the way, Nick got me into the DVC area at Epcot. Oh yeah. So I got free yeah, soda. We were able to do that. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, kick your feet up on the top of the pyramid with uh, little snacks, and you see, uh, you know, old Spaceship Earth in the distance. It's a pretty nice, relaxing time midday. Not this is just bad. not fair. I just feel like y'all are just rubbing it in, rubbing salt in the wound. I didn't get to meet Nick. I didn't get to go to the Top of the World Lounge. I didn't get to go to the, the DVC area in imagination. Yeah, I am better than you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Well, okay. <laughs> It's well, all right. We're, we're, we're going to be back down as DVC members and just we just love going down to Disney. It's we'll, we'll be back and we'll have to make up for it. Absolutely. Yes. We definitely will. Well, Nick, we wanted to bring you on specifically to help us out in talking about this big announcement that we just got from Disney. I know some people were kind of wondering if free dining was actually going to come back this year, um, understanding that the crowds are going to be coming in for star Wars galaxy's edge at the end of August. Um, and you know, through September, October, probably for the next three years, we're going <laughs> to, or more, um, we're going to have, uh, increased crowds due to this brand new, exciting land that we're getting in the Hollywood studios. So some people kind of debated if free dining, uh, would, would come back this year, but it has. Um, and, when we heard that news, that's exciting news. It's certainly something that people look forward to. But, mm -hmm. you know, Samantha and I, we really just don't even know that much about it. All we know is I know that it, that you have to book a room at the rack rate. And if you do that within the right time frame, then you get the dining attached to the resorts or attached to your state. But that's really all I know about it. So um, do you want to know what I know about what the do you dining know about plan? It? Whenever I go to Disney, people ask me, are you on the dining plan? And I say, no. Yeah, that's true. That's you, all I know. You know that people it. ask that question. <laughs> and then that makes us wonder, what does it mean? So so let's just start right exactly at square one. Nick, what is Disney dining? All right. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you started off, you touched on, you know, a couple of the inclusive things. So in order to get 
uh, qualified for this package for the free dining, like you were mentioning, you definitely do have to have, it's a package deal. So you have to be on Disney Resort. Uh, you do have to also have park tickets and that will definitely qualify you mm -hmm. for the free dining offer. Okay. Um, one, the one thing about it, it depends on what caliber resort you stay at and that will kind of change what dining plan you qualify for. So just for argument's sake, for more or less the moderate and the value resorts, you qualify for the quick service dining on the deluxe resorts that's just kind of the standard dining plan oh. we'll get into all the the details of that coming up yeah but um, more or less with those going back to the packages so not only do you have to be on site not only do you have to have tickets but they have to be park hopper tickets oh so you can qualify for the dining plans okay um, that's kind of the gist of it so if that you know for depending on what level of dining plan that you uh, are interested in, it, it might benefit you, incentivize you to, uh, you know, pay a little bit extra for your tickets. So you get a little bit more back from uh, so you don't have to pay for your, you know, your meals or anything, because uh, as you know, anybody that's going down to Disney knows the most expensive thing is getting down there and paying for your rooms. The second most expensive thing that you're going to be shelling out money for is food mm. so uh, this is one way that you can get that big ticket item off you know off your budget so you have a little bit more freedom to buy a little bit more of the jerseys the <laughs> you know the magical ears the whatever seasonal colors that they come out with and yep. you know all the all the other little souvenirs that you can get <laughs> limited um, edition magic bands i like spirit Bang. jerseys yeah. <laughs> that's my thing i have a question yes. already yeah I'm sorry, I I don't know anything, and I'm just gonna That's put fine. that out there. Okay, so, but we're just talking about Disney dining right now, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You're kicked off the podcast. Um, so, so Justin Monorail is no longer here with us. But for me, my question specifically is: You were saying you have to have park copper tickets, but what if you're a pass holder? So if you're a pass holder. And you do go down there. I would have to double check, but I do not believe you would qualify for the free dining plan because you're already a pass holder, and it's just part of that that package mm -hmm. that package deal. If you're not all in, then you're not in at all. Okay. I was selfishly asking that question. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a good question, and I was wondering: uh, Does length of stay matter? Like, could you go stay one or two nights? Um, and qualify for the dining package if you um, get a park hopper for the like like the one or two days. Yeah, no, and I believe this they do have a minimum threshold of three nights. Okay, and you have to have the park hoppers for those, uh, and that kind of kind of brings up uh, another good point about the Disney dining plan is when you get down there. It starts that day that you check in mm. on the checkout day at 12 p.m. If you haven't used all of your uh, entitlements, you lose them. Oh, so that's more of an incentive. As you start getting closer towards your checkout day, every receipt that you get has how many entitlements you still have left. So you know, I'm sure a lot of us, if you you know, tend to look around on the mornings at breakfast, closer to lunch, there's people running out with handfuls of whatever kind of snacks that they that they have just so they use all their entitlements um, oh. because that's that's another thing that we can talk about is the actual quantity of food that they give you mm -hmm. yeah so if you if you don't use your credits you lose them that was that was one of the things that we were wondering about if there was any chance for you to carry them over or get a refund or something but no absolutely not you got to use them so they don't get mad if you take that food and put it in your pocket well, I don't think I you can put like a dessert in your pocket, like from a table later, service restaurant. You're going to put like a tiramisu in your pocket. You can take your pants <laughs> off and lick it. <laughs> well, <God. laughs> I might have to bleep that. That sounds totally inappropriate. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I genuinely am asking, though, can you take the food with you? Like, because I eat small amounts of food. But I eat all the time. Do you mean from a sit-down meal? Yeah, like, like I don't box wanna... it up and take it. 
Well, yeah, I guess, because I don't want to sit down and eat an entire meal, but I want the rest of my meal about two hours later. Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a good point. So I think for, for that, why don't we get into the details of the actual the dining plan and what, what it actually is, because there's different tiers of the dining plan as okay. well. Okay. So uh, the first level, there's three levels all together. First level is the quick service dining plan. So this one, you get two quick service meals, quick service, counter service, you walk up, it's pretty much more or less. I don't want to degrade it or compare it to fast food because there are some phenomenal offerings, some phenomenal food choices that you can get at these quick service meals. But that's more or less what it is. You go up, put your order in, they give you it, and then you can take off. Uh, you can have it in to-go boxes. You can eat it right there and uh, get your stuff together. Uh, they also have two snacks. So it has two quick meals a day, two snacks a day. And with the meals, uh, it's just straight one meal and everybody gets a beverage. So that beverage, I mean, that's, this is kind of one of the important things, especially for the adults that they changed as of, I think it was last year, maybe the year before that you're now qualified. If you're over the age 21 or over, you do qualify for an alcoholic beverage. Mm. So as long as you have your ID with you, you get that alcoholic beverage. Likewise, if you don't want that or you are a younger individual, you can get something, a specialty drink such as, you know, like milkshakes, smoothies, things of that, whatever, whatever they have uh, will definitely qualify for that as well. Um, so that's more or less the quick service. And that's every day. Every day you get two quick service meals, two snacks. Now, the other one, the standard dining plan, this one you get one of the quick service counter service meals one table service meal that you actually sit down with, you have the waiter and you know, they, they take care of you from there. And then this one also gives you two snacks. Um, and then from there, the, as far as the table service qualifications go for breakfast, that can either be a sit down meal or a buffet. Cause there's a lot of different buffets out there, especially at, you know, different resorts that you're going to as well. Uh, and it does also include the drink just like the other one did. Then you've got, as far as lunch and dinner goes, this can be as well the uh, buffet or table um, table option. And this does include the entree, a dessert, and a drink. And that's for everybody that has it. Uh, so there's your offerings there. With also the table service is one of the big incentives to go for that. If you plan to do at the minimum, like one character meal or several character meals, that table service credit, that can be redeemed at a character meal. Mm. With uh, one caveat, I think the only one is Cinderella's Royal Table with Magic Kingdom and Cinderella Castle, that that requires two table service um, credits. Okay. So there's two adults there. That's more or less four, uh, four credits that you would have to use. The adults, the kids... Uh, everybody's included with that, but you can reserve those for character meals as well. The other thing to keep in mind when we're talking about table service is the more popular restaurants that they have down there. Uh, one of the big ones being uh, Be Our Guest Restaurant in Magic Kingdom. That is a what they call a signature dining option. So that also requires two table service credits in order for you to get your whole meal, your entree as well as your dessert and the drink so that that's those two special things some of the other minor things if it does come up with as far as the table service goes you can redeem those for dinner shows pizza delivery or you know pizza carry out at your resort as well as room service uh, those don't get utilized nearly as much as the other things so i think you know the character meals the signature dining those are kind of the more important things to make sure that we address. Um, and the last one, the deluxe plan, this one, if you are a hardcore foodie going down there, this one might interest you. This one has three table service meals per day and two snacks. And the table service meals, more or less for lunch and dinner, this includes an appetizer, the main entree, as well as dessert, and then the drink. So this is pretty much all all inclusive. You don't have to worry about eating any or buying anything else. It's free table service. If you get hungry in between there, you get the snacks. So it's it's 100% fine. With 
all three of those different offerings of the meal plans, like I was saying earlier, you can't specify if you're traveling in a party, two people out of your party of four want the dining plan. It's pretty much all or none. You can't just say there's one or two people that have it. Everybody's included. That includes kids, kids ages three to nine. I believe that as at somewhat of a discounted rate, but the qualification for those kids, they have to order off of the kids menu mm. anywhere mm. they go, kind of regardless. Yeah. Um, and then uh, one of the other big things that they do include is the refillable mugs. So if you've seen anybody with that going down there, you know, that that's included. You can refill those at any of the fountain stations, not only at your resort, at your pool, but also if you do uh, do a little part or resort hopping, go to other resorts, just kind of check it out. You can refill those at other resorts as well. Nice. So that's one of the benefits for those. Yeah. And, yeah. um, I wanted to ask about the the mugs. Do you get those on each tier of the plan? Yeah, so that's included on all three. Okay. So it doesn't matter if you get the quick service, the standard dining plan, or the deluxe. All all three of them, everybody in the party, they get their refillable mug. Okay, that's nice. Yeah, it would be nice if you could use those in the parks too. I know you yeah. can't, but... Um, yeah. That would be a very nice feature, Disney. I don't know why we aren't allowed to do that. Sodas aren't very expensive. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Here, here's a little hack since you did bring that up. Um, I don't know if you've heard anybody uh, have any complaints or anything the, that they don't give you lids or, or straws anymore in the parks. Mm-hmm. So one thing that we do is we got our refillable mugs on our way out to Disney Transportation, fill it up with a little coffee. By the time I get to the resort, coffee's gone. So then when we do order our food, I just dump that cup that doesn't have a top or a lid right into my refillable mug. So then you do have a lid on there. There There you go. Keep it cool. And it's also a good thing to take in the parks. Although you can't directly fill it with soda or anything like that. Uh, Water's free. Yeah. So free ice water. You can carry that around as well. I guess you're right. We could drink water. We don't necessarily (laughs) need soda all the time. (laughs) I mean, speak for yourself. (laughs) You know, it's funny. um, I know like straws, they don't, they don't just automatically give you a straw in the parks anymore, but paper straws are everywhere. I mean, if you're a person who needs a straw, you can find them. Um, That's what I've found anyway. But but yeah, yeah anymore, you know, I, I've uh, just been seeing individuals, especially parents with kids with special needs, if they definitely need to have a straw, they have them there. You just have to ask a cast member yeah. if you can have the straw in the lid. They don't have any problems giving it to you. It's just it just doesn't come standard. With yeah, drinks exactly. So they're still around. You know, yep. I can't help but feel like Disney is challenging me with this deluxe dining <laughs> plan. <laughs> because I don't know if I could eat three full meals every day, but uh, challenge three, ex- three table, yeah. Challenges, but you would you wouldn't have to eat three. You could do one table and a signature, like Nick said. You could do that every yeah. day, but still, that's a lot. Of that food. is a ton of food. Regardless, <laughs> it's a ton of food. I mean, uh, we do like if we do a table service meal one in a day. I'm like, that's enough for I don't need to eat again for the for the rest of the week. Like it's no, no, it's no. always so much food. But we still need popcorn. <laughs> yeah, we need of our course. snacks. <laughs> you got your snacks in there. Yeah, that's fine. It's fine. But it is. It's a lot of food, and that's one of the things. I guess maybe that's why you were saying that for if you book a deluxe resort, you just get the standard dining package. Maybe people right. felt like deluxe dining was too much food or something. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it definitely can be because even if you're in your quick service meals, you know, uh, me and my wife have been going down with our two girls, you know, when they were uh, a little bit younger. Now we have the three, but, you know, they would not eat a ton. So they would split a kid's meal. Me and my wife would split one adult meal and we were all full. I mean, yeah. it, it is a lot of food that you get. But, you know, now that they're getting older, uh, there is less opportunity for dad to get like a little snack and then clean up their plate. <laughs> They're actually eating everything. So now they have to have their own meals. We have to have our own meals. Yeah. And you know, it's getting to the point once your kids get old enough, I mean, it is a hundred percent practical to go on the dining plan. So everybody has enough food to go around, maybe a little bit of leftovers on 
putting chicken nuggets in it or tater tots in your pocket and <laughs> eating them throughout the day while you're waiting in line. Do that. Fine. Give me your tots. <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense to me. I mean, uh, portable chicken nuggets. That's what cargo pockets are for, I think. Is for I chicken nuggets so. and tater tots or whatever else the wife wants me to carry for her. Uh, gross. No. <laughs> Not cargo pockets, regular pockets. I want it smashed against someone's leg. <laughs> well, see, that's what I was saying. The advantage of the cargo pocket, there's some room for it to rattle no, around in no. there. It's, it's, so- it's not going to smash it. No. No. <laughs> so, 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 Nick, the, they've changed the, the tiers, I think, for the hotels, right? Because didn't you, was it in the past, like in the, maybe it was more than two years ago or something, uh, if you booked uh, a deluxe resort, did you get the deluxe dining in the past? Have they changed that? I believe so, but that, that, was, that was a while it ago. It was a while ago? Uh, yeah, now I think it's more or less the standard... Um, like we were talking about the uh, value in the moderate resorts, they get the quick service yeah. and then the deluxe resorts, they get the regular standard dining plan. Um, that's been there for quite a while. I'm not sure how long it okay. was. Can you, um, can you been. pay to upgrade whatever plan you're on? You mean like you're in a, you get the quick service. Can you pay to like get the, to, uh, to the standard, standard dining plan? That is a very good question off the top of my head. I cannot answer that, but I can definitely find out. <laughs> This will be a follow up. Yes. It'll be an addendum right. to the podcast, but um, that would be something that might be interesting. Just because I feel like for our family, like if we were going to go stay at uh, Art of Animation or something, I don't know. I don't know if quick service would do the trick. It might, but I know we like to do table service no. too. So my family's yeah. very spoiled. We are spoiled. Um, can you use your points? For, um, like, stack them or something and use them. Like, say I had a dining service, but I wanted to do, like, I don't know, a signature dining. Can I stack two days of points and use it at a signature dining place? Yeah, and that that's a really good question. So Disney does not specify how you use them. They just give you X amount of there's entitlements per the amount of days that you're down there. So if day one you're down there, you have the quick service meal plan and you get four quick service meals that day, you can do that. Yeah. So I could like not use any snack credits and then go to be our guest. Well, no, you can't. Dang. I don't think you can like go and say, I will right. give you yeah. 10 snack credits. <laughs> For a hamburger <laughs> yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we we had talked about that, and I was like, uh, so so essentially, um, it sounds like the day you check in, you get all your entitlements that day, and then you just get to use them throughout the stay. It's not like they they they're not parenting you and saying, now today you only get two credits, and you have to, like we do with the kids if we send them on a band trip or something. No kidding, <laughs> right? Because right. they yeah, would no, use they all the money in one day. <laughs> Can you imagine if they allowed you to use them? I'd, at the very beginning, I'd be like, I'm going here and I'm going here. And I'd be walking out of every little like concession stand with a candy apple and three sodas and, what? you know, popcorn. You could. You I could, I could do that. my credits. <laughs> you could do that. So, so Nick, yeah. you were saying one of the reasons um, or one of the things I was thinking about, like if you had especially a uh, particularly long stay, I was kind of wondering how you keep track of how many credits you've used and how many you had left. And you mentioned that, I guess it's on the receipts every time you, you buy something. Is is there any yeah. other way you can keep track of that? Like, can you, like, what if you just, I throw away receipts all the time. So how, how else can you check for your point total? Or Yeah. At, at any place or any restaurant that you're at, if you just scan your magic band, I mean, they can pretty much tell you exactly how many, um, whatever it may be, quick service, table service, snack credits that you have. So, I mean, they can keep track of all that stuff for you. I don't think you can see that on like your My Disney Experience app. I don't think that's on there. I, I, read, something, just- I read something that now you can mobile order possibly with the dining plan. So maybe you can. I don't know. That's something. Yeah. yeah, and that that is a very good point there because I, that was another thing we were going to talk about is, yeah, you can use uh, the Disney dining plan for mobile ordering. I personally have not done that because that's relatively new. So I don't, I don't know if it comes up that you can uh, you can see that stuff. Like check how many entitlements you have. how much detail it would be. 
Yeah. yeah. That, certainly it should be if it's not. So we're, we're going to put that out there and say, Disney, this is another idea that you need to incorporate immediately. We know you listen to this podcast. Yeah, they do. <laughs> let, us, for me. let us manage our dining plan on the My Disney Experience app. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, yeah. it's, uh, I think, um, if it were me, and you know, the, the the thing that I always hear people say about the Disney dining plan, and, and this is just coming from, you know, uh, stories that people tell me about doing it in the past is, is A, it's a lot of food, and then B, they sometimes they don't feel like it's worth it just because the way that you really have to try to get the value out of it is, is order like the most expensive thing when you go to a table service or a signature um, restaurant. I know, I'm, <laughs> I've had water. I don't know what's going on with me. Um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, but it, it does seem like if you were going to try a dining plan, this would be the way to do it um, by packaging it with your room and your like if you know you're, you know you're paying for a room, you know you're going to get a park hopper ticket, you know, th- then now is the time to really try this out and take advantage of it. I, I feel like. Yeah, and I kind of feel like challenge is accepted, Disney. I will order the most expensive thing <laughs> on every single menu. Do I want a lamb leg of lamb? Mm, maybe not that day, <laughs> but by God, it is $56, and then most expensive thing on the menu, I'm in. <laughs> yeah, and I have heard that in you know a lot of different places, especially on YouTube, that there are different theories behind how you can maximize and really get your money's worth out of it by doing things like that, going to these particular restaurants rather than these other ones, just because they have more expensive things on the menu. So you get your bang for the buck, sticking it to the man by getting that. (laughs) Um, There's also, I know on um, the Disney food blog, they have little hacks and little tips how to maximize your snack credits because one of the big things with, when you're going down there, if you're going to get, you know, like a bottle of water or um, like some popcorn, you can use your snack credits for that. Uh, if you look at it, it's pretty much a waste of money. You need mm. to make sure that you get that candy apple or mm. um, that Dole Whip float. So, yeah. you, you know, you can at least maximize what you're getting out of that. You can pay out of pocket for that bottle of water or that popcorn. Those things are really not that expensive to begin with. So. Right. That makes a lot of sense. Those, I think those are really good tips because that could be a way that you could just kind of waste some snack credits, walk out with a, a bunch of bottles of water. You can get free water. We already said it. Nick told you. It, you can drink water in the parks, and it's free. You just tell them you tell them you want a cup of ice water. Peasants water. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I actually get it all the time. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's always nice to have a Nick in your back pocket like yeah. i've always said mm-hmm. i wish right. i wish we'd had him when we initially came to disney as a family but yeah we probably made a bunch of mistakes i'm oh. sure well we know we na- we made a bunch of mistakes and yeah because justin thought he was planning everything <laughs> i did plan everything <laughs> yeah now we don't know if i did the best job planning everything but I did. oh i can already tell you you didn't thanks you're welcome appreciate it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's one good reason uh, for the travel agents, uh, whether it's myself, anybody else. There's a lot of people, friends, family that do it, but we can help you navigate through all the details of Disney to begin with from why it's important to care where you're going to eat 100 days, 180 days out, uh, why you need to know what kind of rides or attractions you want to experience 60 days out help you interpret and decipher what the Disney dining plan is, why you should care about that. And, you know, anything else that we can help you with to really go down there, have a magical experience, not really think about stress out about how many different options that you have down there. Cause if I can tell you the things that, that you need to hit and the things that it's okay to skip. Yeah. Yeah, it may save your marriage. <laughs> Just kidding. We, I, I did get mad at him a few times. No, definitely not. <laughs> but you know, with a Nick Salcedo, I wouldn't have been yeah. so mad at you. <laughs> yeah. No, it's a fan. You, I feel like you've got that sales pitch down, Nick. I, and I'm sold. And I hope that. People that just heard that are sold, and you've got to reach out to Nick if you have 
any questions, you need help planning your Disney vacation, Nick is going to do it for you. And Nick, how much do you charge people when you plan their Disney vacation? Oh, I'm glad you asked that because that is one of the big elephants in the room when everybody asks for my services, just as inquiring is how much do you charge? You're going to Disney World, it's a big goose egg. Absolutely nothing to you. What? All my experience is free. You got it. Free? (laughs) Free? Free free to you. Don't worry about how I get paid or anything like that. It is if you go online and book everything yourself or you let me do it, arguably I can get you a cheaper price just because I will be very into watching all the different deals that Disney has. Like on Tuesday when everything dropped, no travel agent. I don't even think Disney cast members to certain levels were aware that that was even going to happen. So as soon as I saw that 6 a.m. on that day, you better believe on 7 a.m. I was on that computer rebooking different individuals that qualified for those different offers. And they were, I was getting the better prices on not only their rooms, the free dining, just the cheaper vacation package. And all that cost them nothing. All they did was wake up that morning and, hey, I got an email from Nick. What? I'm going to Disney for less of a price now. Those uh, uh, whatever rose gold mini ears, <laughs> guess we're getting five of them. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's <laughs> yes. the way Hold to spend your money. Whatever you want. Let me just try and get that, get that price down. It's no hassle to you whatsoever. If you need to change or modify anything, let me sit on the phone for Disney for a couple of hours. You guys just make sure the biggest thing that I want everybody to get out of their vacation is a magical experience that all of us that have had that get. Absolutely. Just just trying to share the magic. That's all we're doing. I think that's really awesome. It's almost just, it's like it's a no-brainer or something. I don't know. It is a no-brainer. It absolutely is. I know. It's something like that. And uh, I, I, what does that say about people who don't do it? Mm-hmm. We have less than no brain. No. We have negative brain. No brain. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, Nick, that's that's awesome. And it is like you can tell that you've got a passion for this and that makes a difference to you care about it. You're, you're a person who goes and experiences these things with your family. So, you know, firsthand, just like you said, things that you need to do, things that you can probably skip and you can tailor things to exactly what people are looking for when they're trying to make a magical vacation for them, which can be very unique person to person. So yeah, yeah, that's, that's awesome. Anything we missed about the dining plan? Anything you wanted to share? Um, I think that pretty much covers the dining plan. Uh, Just a few little quick hits for as far as the offer goes. I know we already touched on the difference between booking with a value and also a moderate resort. Disney also likes to throw in kind of little caveats to more or less the higher demand resorts, they don't offer nearly as much. Mm -hmm. So like, for example, I can honestly not tell you how many individual parties that I've booked for uh, the Art of Animation, the Little Mermaid standard rooms. Those are ones that do not qualify for this uh, free dining offer. It's at the Art of Animation, it has to be a family suite. Ah. Uh, Port Orleans, French Quarter, and Riverside, both of those are not included as well. Wow. So those resorts, those are the more They're highly book popular anyway. resorts. Yeah. They just don't need to offer it for them. They're trying to incentivize people to go different places to yeah. spread out the crowds. You know, Disney does that better than anybody else is trying to, you know, pull at your wallet strings just so you <laughs> spend money here rather than there and yeah they do pretty well free food i think we're all in for that yeah yeah they're, they're pretty no good kidding. at what they do for sure no those are good pointers yeah. and and specifically because i mentioned art of animation earlier um mm-hmm. little mermaid room we're we're out of luck we're not, not getting any dining for the little mermaid rooms those are our favorite <laughs> right <laughs> is it our favorite or we've, i mean is we've it stayed just what we know we've arguably stayed there more than any of the other resort hotel that's true rooms that's so I guess just by frequency of stay, it's our favorite. Yeah, We're we voting gotta, with our wallet. Yeah, we got to fix that. <laughs> I mean, we got to. I'm sure that vote. will change once you guys get your DVC membership too, right? That's yes. right. Yes, <laughs> we are getting that. Yeah. And we are still, I didn't mean that we were changing the voting with our wallet. We're still voting with our wallet. Mm-hmm. 
but we should be DVC members. No, I agree. I'm on board. You don't have to sell me on that. I think I sold you on that. I know. God. <laughs> it's insane. And, and I, great people like Nick have helped me out in that, too. The DVC duo, they helped that's out quite true. a bit. That's true. And I'm actually talking about putting Disney paintings in my house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. What is wrong with me? You're, you're uh, hey, fully on board. There's nothing wrong with that. No. You know, I, I tell you what, the one thing that we did on our spring trip, so Disney has fine art photography down there. So we got family pictures at the resort, the Polynesian. So we have different parts of the Polynesian. We've got Cinderella Castle in the background. We've got our pictures. We're all wearing our Mickey ears. We've got that through the house. It's fine. There's no That's problem. That's awesome. There. See, family pictures at the resort. I love it. Well, <laughs> I've talked about because you know they've got the uh, Photo Pass Studio at Disney Springs, <laughs> and yeah. and so when McKenna was last year, she was a senior in high school, and so I was like, why don't we do her senior pictures at the Photo Pass <laughs> Studio? <laughs> so you got it's it. Definitely an option with our past. Yeah, it's included. <laughs> <laughs> We're so cheap. <laughs> yeah. I uh, did say that the guest bedroom, Landon's bedroom, had to be set up like a Disney bedroom. And then it somehow expanded to, in our di- in our dining room, we could have Ratatouille. <laughs> and then in our living room, we could have like Cinderella's castle and here I want bell. And I was like, wait, what am I doing? Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty surprised you don't want to do the whole house beauty and the beast because I know how you are about bell. Uh, so, she reads books maybe. and she doesn't judge a book by its cover. That's true. <laughs> I don't know. She loves a beast and so do I. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but no, that's, uh, we, we are going to be adding some Disney decorations to the house at some point. And, um, you know, we're going to be able to do that because we're going to save money by calling up Nick to help us save whenever we do stay at the resort. And yeah. you need to do that too. So what we, then I'm tying it back. I'm bringing it back around. So, back. so Nick, how do people get in touch with you if they want your help planning their vacation? All right. So two different ways that you can, I mean, first and foremost, um, most active on Twitter. So if you send me a direct message, send me a tweet, give me your email, we can definitely take care of uh, getting your quote, planning your trip down there. So you can follow me at TTA underscore team underscore lead. Check me out on Twitter. Uh, you know, post a lot of different things, try and get involved with the community, just talking about Disney. That's one of the things that I really like to, you know, get involved with. We all, share our Disney pictures that we take just to make it through. So we get to our next. So I really like doing that. Um, I'm also on Facebook. So if you can find me, uh, I'm at Nick Salcedo, Salcedo spelled S as in Sam, A L C E D O. And that's at capture the magic vacations. I've got my Facebook page, a lot of different info there as well. So contact me with either one of those. Um, if you want to, it's also um, Nick Salcedo at CaptureTheMagicVacations.com. Any different way, get in touch with me, follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and then, you know, let's let's plan your next magical vacation, man. I'm all for it. Do it. Do it. And Nick, I feel like we need to make this like a recurring segment. We need to do something more regularly. Get you—you you need to be a uh, a featured act on the Monday Morning Monorail podcast. So we're going to make that happen. I agree. <laughs> All right, hey, I, I'd love to. I'd love to come back and enjoy the monorail with you guys. You know, on a on a more regular basis. So you know, the door's always open. I love talking about Disney World, Disney anything. You guys name it, I'll be there. Awesome. Before we go, can I add in, uh, so Disney, they did release the free dining offers. They also have two other ones that are kind of under the radar, and they all often do that as they have Mm -hmm. one big feature one and then a couple other little smaller tiers that might, you know, incentivize some other people. So one of the other offers that they have is a room-only discount. So if you're going down there, if you are an annual pass holder, you're going down there, you need a room. They do have discounts for room only. They do also have family packages. So if you're a family of four going days, times, that's available for individuals also within that time frame of September and December as well. 
And I think that one, the family of four one, I could not find that on a Disney World website, but that I was able to book two individual uh, family parties going down around, you know, the December mark on the Disney Travel Agent website. So that's oh. another reason for the Disney Travel Agents. Sometimes they'll finagle that so it looks a lot easier to navigate for us. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Well, take advantage of it. Call no Nick. Kidding. He can help you with any yeah. of those things. All right. Well, Nick, thanks so much for joining us. And again, we are going to have to do it soon. And I, I really feel like we need to do it on a more regular basis because it's always a lot of fun. You always bring great information. And I really hope that people reach out to you and take advantage of everything that, that you have to offer as a vacation planner. So, um, so uh, it was great having you. Thanks so much. And, and again, we'll do it again very soon. Yeah, definitely. You got it. Yeah. Anytime, anytime you want, just let me know. I appreciate, appreciate the uh, ride on the monorail. It was a, it was a blast and look forward to next time. Awesome. Well, and I want to thank you all for listening to us today. If you have any questions for Nick, you can reach out to him on Twitter. Again, that's at TTA underscore team underscore lead. Help, let him help you plan your next vacation. And again, he charges nothing. It's free. Why would you not work with him? Let him do it. And then you can also reach out to us with questions, even though obviously we don't know anything. Yeah. But we're <laughs> at Morning Monorail on Twitter. We're Monday Morning Monorail at gmail.com if you want to email us. We're Monday Morning Monorail on all the other social medias. Check out the YouTube. You can see. You know, uh, uh, some videos we've thrown up there that show my ugly mug and Landon's ugly mug and yeah, a few I don't other random things. I don't participate <laughs> in that. <laughs> but, uh, but we do offer lots of different opportunities on the social medias to connect with us. So please do that. And hopefully you will. But even if you don't, we'll be right back here next week. Have a magical week. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for riding with us today. We hope you enjoyed the journey, and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Until then, we want to hear from you. Send us questions, comments, and suggestions on Twitter at Morning Monorail. Our email address is mondaymorningmonorail at gmail.com. You can also call our voicemail at 407-917-2144. As we approach the station, gather your belongings, and please watch your step as you exit. <laughs> See y'all.